Hey everybody, so today I'm here to do another chit chat video with you guys. I feel like I just did one, but there has been a lot that's been going on, so I did want to make another one. And I'm back out in the car for a couple different reasons, but you guys seem to like it, and also it was just nice for me to be able to come out here and just for 20-30 minutes just be able to talk to the camera. No interruptions, no children in the background, no weird noises in my house that I have to edit out or anything. So I do have a list of stuff on my phone that I wanted to talk to you guys about. And I think the first thing, you know, because I've had little things here and there that, you know, obviously I save up to talk about in a chit chat. But this just happened. And as soon as it happened, I was like, I need to make a chit chat video. I need to talk to somebody because this is aggravating. So... Uh, if you've been around for a while, you've probably heard me talk about how much I like my OB, which by the way, I'm like, if you see me looking around, it's because my neighbors are out. It's not necessarily a nice day or anything. It's actually pretty cold, but everybody's outside for some reason. And they all saw me get in my car with my camera and I'm just sitting here. <laughs> so I'm like trying to not look like a freak. But anyways, if you've been around for a while, you know that I've talked a lot about how much I love my OB. I found her like I think it's going on six years ago and she was just amazing. Um, I was going through a time where I was constantly sick and I didn't know why and I had a lot of other doctors just kind of write me off. They kept wanting to just give me medicine and the medicine was not working. I actually became immune like a couple different medicines don't actually work on me anymore because I was taking them for so long and so often and she was the first doctor who like actually walked through my problems and helped me and that meant a lot and that was like way before I was ever a mom or wanted kids and then whenever I did get pregnant and through my miscarriages and stuff she's just been above and beyond what I would expect an OB to be like you know with being high risk in both my pregnancies and just my experience beforehand she really does go above and beyond what I'm used to and what I've seen so I love her well <laughs> this Friday and they announced it in the afternoon, which kind of upset me because on Fridays they close early. So it almost felt like it was intentional that the statement was released on Friday and it was in the afternoon, well after they closed and stuff. So nobody's going to have any answers until you call or you go into the office on Monday. So my OB is affiliated with a hospital. She's actually kind of technically attached to it but anyways they announced that the hospital is going to be shutting down their labor and delivery they're not going to do that anymore so basically just shutting down their maternity ward and they're not going to offer any kind of maternity services which is a big blow in our community as a whole because I do live in a small town and just I think it was last year or maybe two years ago a town that is, I would say, the next closest to me actually shut down their maternity services. And several years ago, another town did. So basically now people in my area now have to travel at least 45 minutes to an hour to get any kind of maternity services. And that means high-risk doctors. That means the hospital. That might mean non-stress tests, stuff like that. And, you know, that doesn't sound like too big of a deal but especially when you have other children you have other things going on in your life maybe you have a job you have other commitments it is hard that is a lot of time to not only travel but then set you know going to that uh facility and then doing whatever you need to get done it's a lot of time so that in itself i was upset about Obviously, I was hoping that all my kids could be born at the same hospital. I loved the hospital. I loved my experience. I loved my nurses. I loved everything about it. And I'll get to my feelings here in a second. So let me just spit out the rest of the information. But it's not just the hospital. They're also closing down my doctor's practice because there are several doctors in one practice. And they're closing that down. And I'm just like, what? Like... I couldn't believe this. I could not believe this. I didn't get any kind of heads up or anything at all. And like I said, it was announced on a Friday. So people aren't going to even get answers until maybe Monday. And I'm really trying to go into the office and not just call them because I just feel like everybody's going to be calling. Sorry, I know the lighting's probably like a little wonky, a little weird, but you know, bear with me here. Um, I'm going to scooch down a little bit so you guys can like see my full face. I just jumped right into it. I just wanted to talk to you guys. I did not give a crap about the lighting or anything. I'll try to stay forward so my face is not like completely dark either. 
But anyways, they are dissolving that practice and no one knows what that means. They do have another office in a town that's about 20, 25 minutes away from me, but it's under the same name. So I don't know if she'll be moving to that practice and they'll be starting a new one under a new name or if she'll go into her private practice or if, I mean, my doctor's not old by any means. I think she's around 50 years old or so. Maybe she's younger, maybe she's older. I'm not really sure, but you know, she's still pretty young for a doctor and I'm not, I don't see her retiring, but at the same time, I don't know either. You know, you don't know what doctors are going to decide to do. And I'm really nervous because this could mean that I need to go find a new OB. And I'm really hoping that even if my OB doesn't stay in practice, that the OB who assisted on both the girls' births, which is another woman, she was awesome. I've also just met with her a couple times because my doctor wasn't available and I prefer her. And like if I have to see somebody else. And she's amazing too. So I'm hoping, and she's even younger than my doctor. She's very young. So I'm hoping that even if my doctor doesn't stay in practice, she at least does somewhere around here and I can go to her. Now about my feelings about this. It's just, it sucks. It really does. It sucks that I didn't get to know what was going on. I didn't get to prepare myself. You know, I didn't know that I was going to have to look for another doctor. Obviously, we're trying to conceive and OB matters. She's going to matter in the future. And so is a hospital that I have to deliver at and stuff like that. And in the past, I've been high risk both times. I've had non-stress tests ever since I was like 32 weeks pregnant. I go twice a week. And all of that really wasn't that bad because I did have a hospital that was 15 minutes from my house. My OB was 15 minutes from my house. My high risk stuff was a little bit away, but I mean, I was going to some of the best high risk doctors, so I felt like it was worth it. But now I have to basically drive 45 minutes to an hour to anywhere. I'm upset about it for a lot of different reasons, but I think the biggest and one that people probably aren't going to understand unless they've been pregnant, they've had kids, they've gone through and like really loved their doctor through all that and whatever, is the fact that, you know, there's a lot of scary things that have happened in my pregnancies. I've had scheduled C-sections. That's a major surgery. It's a lot. It is a lot. And I'm not an outwardly emotional person. I tend to just keep it all inside. And the more I know, the better I feel. And I love my doctor. She keeps that line of like, telling me what I need to know without telling me too much to freak me out or stressing me out. And I just remember being in that OR every time I've had to have a delivery. And I look around and I don't know anybody in there. You know, I don't know the nurses. I don't know the anesthesiologist. I don't know the techs and the assistants or anything. And there's all these people and you're butt naked. You've got a catheter and there's somebody who's going to be poking something in your spine that is very serious and they're going to lay you down. They're going to cut you open. And it's this room full of people that you don't know. And there is really not a whole lot much more that's been scarier to me. And I want to trust whoever's doing that. And I trust my doctor. And the second that I see her, because I get to see her before I even get to see Mark, she puts me at ease. She's always talked me through it. She's always promised that she will do her best to take care of me and my kids. And it's just really meant a lot to me. And honestly, just through it all, she's been really great, you know, and she's been able to, I don't know how to word it really, but like, it's, it is really scary to know that you're going through complicated times, whether it's in your pregnancy or if you're having that major surgery of a C-section. It's a lot. And it's a lot to do without your partner because Mark can't be at every appointment. He can't be at every scan. He is not allowed to be in the OR until right before they're going to cut me open. So like, I have to do a lot of it without him. And that sucks. But I feel like my doctor has been there for most of it and that makes me feel so much better and I really don't want to start over you know I was getting used to that hospital and knowing what the procedures were and knowing you know getting to know the nurses like obviously nurses change there's a lot of turnover but there was a couple that were repeats and like that made me feel good and like I said, I just love that hospital. I love my OB. I loved the OB who's assisted both times and stuff like that. And it's just, it's really upsetting to think that I might have to start all over whenever I do have to deliver and have a pregnancy again and stuff. It's just upsetting. So I'm, I don't know. 
I think that's about everything that I feel about it. Not to mention it's a huge inconvenience now. And like I said, all of my testing or anything like that that needs to be done, I might have to drive 45 minutes to an hour. I mean, whether if you have other kids or even if it's your first child and you just have a job or, you know, whatever, even if you don't have anything at all going on and you have all the time of day, to drive basically almost two hours just like here and back and then have to do whatever, that's like a three, four, five hour chunk of time of your day. That's a lot to do. And obviously I'm not going to take it lightly and I'm not going to just not do things because a pregnancy is super important and doing what your doctors tell you to do is pretty important as well. So I'm not going to like disobey any of that, but it's also going to come at a really big inconvenience. And I hated when I had to go to my high risk doctors and I had to leave Sophie alone. And I mean, my kids genuinely don't really care. They see me day in and day out. The more time they get to spend with their grandparents, the more that they love it. They they are fine. And my grandparents and my mom and everybody else, my mother-in-law, they love to babysit. And they are constantly asking to watch the kids. And I like to take them up on that. But I also do have like a bit of guilt. And it's not like I'm not doing anything, you know, so I don't know why I feel that way, but it does make me feel like I feel bad for taking a huge chunk of my day just like, and most of that is through traveling. Just let's use the example of a non-stress test. Non-stress tests are typically 20 minutes long. Let's just say even 30 minutes by the time that they get you in a bed and ready or whatever. And then my non-stress test will literally be less time than it is to drive to the non-stress test one way. And I'm just completely annoyed by it. I'm annoyed that I didn't get to know, that I didn't get a heads up or anything. And I know there can be a number of different reasons, like why, but I don't know. I'm just really kind of irritated about it and upset and worried and stuff like that. You know, you don't plan on wanting to change doctors if you don't want to and now it seems like I'm going to have to maybe possibly I'm going to either go in on Monday or I'm going to call Monday and if I can't get through either day that I'm gonna try again on Tuesday hopefully by the next chit chat I will have answers and I can tell you guys what's going on but I'm just I'm kind of annoyed I'm I just didn't expect this and it sounds, from what I've heard, it, it sounded like not a whole lot of people were happy about it, even at the hospital and stuff like that. But the reasoning was, is that apparently people are going elsewhere anyways, which I just have a hard time believing. I don't know that I do because like I said, everything else other than this hospital is 45 minutes to an hour away. So why would people, the majority, and I mean, they were saying 70%. So I personally don't know that I believe it. It feels more like because they said they want to become more of like a surgical imaging and cancer treatment center. There's more money in that. There's more long term money in that than it is to deliver babies. And that's what it kind of feels like to a lot of people. I would hope that that's not their main motivation, but come on. So in the United States, it is all about money in the healthcare system. So. I don't know. I'm just really was like blindsided by like that. And the fact that it was all released on Facebook, it wasn't even put on their website or anything. If you go to their website right now, it still says that they're taking patients and even like my OB's office and stuff, they're still accepting new patients. And I should say this isn't immediate. It's in June, but still, I mean, June's really not that far away. So I'm just stressed to say the least and I'm really hoping that come Monday she's like I've got a plan and she's gonna stay in practice and stuff and again sorry for this lighting I don't really know what to do here so I turned so my face was a little bit more lit up but yeah if neither one of them decide to stay in practice it looks like I'm just gonna have to find a new OB which is not going to be a fun process because I am particular so I wanted to tell you guys that first and foremost because when it happened, I just feel like a lot of people don't understand how emotional it is. Having a baby, being pregnant, stuff like that, it's a very emotional time. It's a huge point in your life and 
the doctor that you go through it with and if you feel supported and especially if you do have a complicated pregnancy or you have a complicated past whatever it might be having a doctor there who supports you through it it's hard not to feel you know some kind of sentiment towards them i wish i had answers and stuff i've been trying to tell myself all weekend like there's nothing i can do to like try and figure it out i've been like reading comments as they come up on stuff and nobody has any idea of like what's going to be going on because the article was really vague it didn't say what was going to happen to these patients of the ob's office or anything so who knows i don't so moving on to the next subject so about these girls, they are doing well. Um, Sophie had a dermatologist appointment. I think I might have mentioned that. No, I can't remember. I don't know if I mentioned it in the last chit chat video, but she did have a dermatologist appointment. Sophie had warts on her fingers. She also has one on her toe. Yeah. And we went to go get those removed and I love our dermatologist. She's technically a physician's assistant they really try to reserve um our dermatologist for like if people specifically want to see him or if it's a more serious case because it is also a skin cancer treatment center but i love her and she's amazing like so 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 amazing when i got my moles biopsied and stuff for my skin check she was great with me and i just decided to you know stick with her and keep the appointment with Sophie to her and she did really well and I am so happy because we thought like um when they're in the nail folds she said that they could be kind of difficult might take more than one treatment or whatever and Sophie did have pretty sizable ones on her fingers we had tried a lot at home but it wasn't working and they were just spreading to other places because as much as I would tell her not to pick at them eventually she eventually would and you know they'd be open and they can spread that way so we just wanted to get them removed so they wouldn't spread anymore and her pediatrician recommended it so that's why we went and luckily it worked it was a really weird process it it's like this stuff that they just put on it it like turns white and then you got to keep that dry and then there was like a blister which the blister like cuts off the blood supply to the wart and after that it said it was supposed to come off but nothing really happened like it just kind of looked like both the warts got smaller shouldn't say both all the warts got smaller and um we were just like oh well we're just gonna have to take her back for a second go and then like one day i looked at her hands and i was like they're gone like magically they're gone but i'm just really happy because i didn't want those to keep spreading because she's had those two on her feet but then she got another one on her hand and then it got on her foot and i was like we just got to nip this in the butt. She's only three years old. She doesn't understand that she needs to leave those alone all the time. She does pretty well for the most part, but I found it was like at night or early in the morning where I'm not with her and maybe like she's trying to go to sleep or if, I don't know, whatever, but she ends up picking at him. So I'm glad that's taken care of. And Mark and I have talked more about the preschool thing and we have looked into it in the preschool or the kindergarten we are planning on setting the kids at. Um, does not accept kids under five and they have to be five by the end of September which Sophie will not be she will be five at the end of October so she would most likely have to do two years of preschool so we're trying to decide if two years of preschool is really something that we want to do or if we're just going to put her in a couple of like daily programs um, she's definitely going to be playing some sports this fall because she wants to she's asked to so we're going to do that but i would also like to get her in that kind of classroom environment just for her to get kind of accustomed to it obviously also like socialize and stuff like that sorry i put my finger over the microphone but i'm trying to cover up the back of my camera naturally anytime i film the sun finds the back of my freaking camera and just beats down on it it's so hot but um we're just trying to decide if we want to do full bloom preschool this year or if we want to do just like a few day program on top of the sports really just trying to figure out what we want to do because she is going to have to wait a whole nother year um when most kids her age would be going to kindergarten she's going to have to wait another year so that's what's going on with sophie and then little miss remy she's doing really well um 
She's been having a lot of an eczema flare-up. She also has this red patch right underneath her eye, which is extremely flaky. I think what happened is, is like, she scratched herself itching, and that just, like, irritated her skin. She's got the most sensitive skin in the world. She also has, like, not an actual diaper rash, but, like, her butt's been a little raw because she's been having some vicious poops. TMI, I know, but I'm a mom, so, like, poop in dirty diapers is a large chunk of my life but um poor little thing her skin's just been really dry i think it's like the fluctuating weather lately and that's when i notice a lot of her skin issues are around is fluctuating temperatures so really haven't noticed anything else that triggers her luckily but yeah that's been going good and i'm getting stuff together for her birthday party like I said it's Daniel Tiger thank you to all of you who put the links to stuff that was on Amazon because that's where I ordered it from because I'm not I'm not messing with like separate websites and stuff ordered everything off of Amazon and I think I think everything's came I think there was like one party favor and one balloon that was gonna be like close to late but they actually came a lot sooner than what they were scheduled to oh this lighting you guys I'm sorry I know it's not the best but it's quiet in here so that's what matters right <laughs> but she's doing really well and i feel like she's talking a lot more and um a lot better than what i'm used to she's putting longer phrases together and just an example off the top of my head is the other day that she told me that sophie she said sophie push head hurt so she put all those words together telling me that Sophie pushed her and she hurt her head. And, you know, she's getting better at that, which is going to be interesting to see how them tattling on each other is going to play out because I know that's not far off. But she's been doing really, really well. And I'm slowly becoming more fluent in Remy because there is that, like, toddler stage where they try to say things but they don't say them necessarily like the best way so like mom has to decipher a lot of what they're saying i'm there with remy uh it is really really fun to get to know her little language and yeah she, i feel like she's also branching out and being more of her own person you know before she was really following sophie and doing everything that sophie did and she did it and all that but you know, more often now I find her doing her own thing and she wants to dress up even if Sophie's not doing it or she wants to be a superhero even if Sophie's not doing it, stuff like that, which I think is really cool because I want to see her personality shine through. And obviously being a big sister, I know that having a little sister, they do want to do a lot of things just like you, but it is good to have their own personality, their own interests and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to see what Sophie or what Remy is going to be interested in and I used to make fun of Mark all the time because he used to mix their names up and now I do it constantly so that's about everything that's going on with the girls going off myself I'm just trying to stay on top of work and me and Mark literally play our video games every single night and that's been so much fun it's like just like a little relaxation for both of us Video games is something that we bonded over whenever we first met, but we kind of have a difficulty finding games that fit us because, number one, we go we go through them rather quickly, and also we just have different preferences when it comes to video games, but the prop hunt never really gets old, and um, there's enough maps, and we also have it on two different Call of Duties, so... There's like different stuff like that and it's a lot of fun it's like a light-hearted game i do feel like a lot of games i have to be like trying to compete with him which i hate because mark is just so naturally amazing at video games it's just unreal really i don't think there's ever been a video game i've seen him like really struggle with learning he's just like a natural with them so We've just been doing that, like enjoying our time, but there's been a lot going on that made me want to come on here and talk to you guys because, I don't know, this is, like I said before, it's very therapeutic for me because I don't have a lot of, like, real life in life friends and I do talk to them, but I also don't like to just, like, talk their ear off about the same thing over and over again and obviously when you have a conversation with people, it's like, two ways and sometimes I feel like I don't get to say things that I was thinking of you know I'm just trying to 
have that conversation with them. Whereas with you guys, I can say whatever's on my mind and then you guys reply in the comments and like that's the conversation and I love that. Not to say that I don't like to give other people the chance to talk. I don't know what's wrong with me today. I just stick my foot in my mouth all the time. Um, <laughs> I just meant that like I can say what's on my mind and I cannot forget about it and I can tell you guys like wholeheartedly like what I'm feeling about stuff. And then you guys give me your comments and your feedback and like that means a lot to me. So I love doing these chit chat videos and like I said, I think I did one not too long ago, but things are changing. So I just wanted to come on here and um, the weather has been slightly getting better. So give me some ideas of like what to go do with my kids. Obviously the zoo, obviously children museums, but tell me what your favorite things are to do because... I need some new ideas, especially since I have this new Juvie stroller, which I freaking love. I want to take this bad boy everywhere, and I want to test it out. So, I need some ideas. I want something a little bit different, something my kids aren't used to. So, if you've got any ideas, let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.